Hey guys, it's me Minori and my pet Baymax. Welcome back to my channel. Hi. So if you guys know me, I'm a huge Potterhead. Any Gryffindors? And as a Potterhead, there is this one thing that I've been wanting to do for a very long time. And it is to recreate Harry Potter as manga. The books are great, the movie's great, and I just can't help but to imagine how it would be if it were a manga. And since there's no such thing as Harry Potter manga, I was like, I'm going to recreate it myself. Obviously, I'm not a real manga artist, I'm just a self-taught artist, so I don't think it's gonna turn out like perfect, but I'm going to try my best. So without further ado, turning Harry Potter into manga. So let's get started. So obviously I wouldn't be able to turn the whole series into manga because that's just gonna take forever. Today I just decided to choose two iconic scenes that I really like from the first book. So the first scene that I chose is when Hagrid tells Harry that he's a wizard. So iconic that it's a meme actually. I'm sure everyone knows that scene so let's get started. While a lot of people go digital these days, I'm sticking with paper and pen because I just like that authentic manga feeling. You know? Like it's like reading a book with a hardcover book versus with a tablet. I can show you guys how to do digital manga art maybe some other day. If you guys like that, please comment below. So for this scene, I wanted to go big and draw two panels on one sheet. <laughs> oh look, it's Harry. I just thought if Harry Potter really were a manga, this would be one of the most significant scenes that would be like filling up the whole page. So I'm going to draw Harry Potter on the top and then Hagrid on the bottom. Wait, did that sound wrong in any way because that was not on purpose? You know what, let's just forget about it. Now let's move on to the rough draft. Every manga artist will change a bit of their style according to the story. Like if it's like a comedy, then it will be more fun, cute, and pop. If it's more hentai, ooh, then it will be more erotic. If it's more serious, it could look more realistic. I think you get my point. So today I wanted to go with that Harry Potter feeling which I think is more like serious and dark and magical. I wanted to go for a more semi-realistic look. If you know me, cute is my vibe and I usually go for more cutesy looks, but today is a little different. But I'm actually really liking how it's turning out here. And onto Hagrid. So Hagrid would be a little bit in my uncomfortable zone because when I draw or practice, I usually just draw guys and girls. So I don't think I've ever drawn like an old big man with a beard before. In my life. One of my huge pet peeves is when manga artists draw elder people with really huge magical eyes that don't really fit them. Some of them just end up looking like a young person just with extra lines in their face. Like that's not how elder people should look like. You can't just draw lines in the face and call them old. You need to change how you draw the facial structure, eyes, nose, just everything to make them look old. So that is what I'm trying to do here today. And Hagrid was kind of hard because I wanted to make him look like big and old, kind of scary looking. But when you look into his eyes, you know that that person is not evil at all. I wanted him to have some warmth in his eyes. And with a lot of racing and redrawing, I think it kind of turned out okay. What do you guys think? Moving on, I used the light box to fix up some parts here and there because if you get to see through from the other side, it's just easier to notice some parts that are off. After I felt okay, I got another sheet of paper and traced it with blue lead. This step is optional. You can always just go in with that first draft, but I usually do this because I want to clean up the lines a bit. It's easier for me to see where to draw in the lines and it'll be easier for me to erase the lines later on. Okay, let's move on to the next step. Now, you need your feather pen and ink ready to do the outline. So I actually used two different types of ink to draw because I'm weird. And also because some ink could be more thick and opaque, which is usually easier to draw in the face, while other ink could be more watery and blendable, which I usually like to use for the hair. And here's a pen and some multi-liner pens. With the thickest 0.5 pen, I'm going to start by drawing the panel lines. Seriously, be careful when using the ink because they could go everywhere and ruin your life. But now that we have everything ready, let's dip in the pen. And here we go. So guys, I am a Gryffindor. Any Gryffindors? Okay, so I get a lot of comments telling me that I'm not a Gryffindor, but a Hufflepuff. I think that's kind of rude. 
No, I'm not mad. I love Hufflepuffs. But if someone believes that they are in a certain house, they probably have a reason in mind. And to tell that person that they aren't from that house is kind of like denying what they think of themselves. Do you get what I mean? Like, if someone believes that they are a Hufflepuff because they think they're happy, joyful, and loyal, and to tell them that they're not a Hufflepuff but actually a Ravenclaw kind of means like they aren't as joyful as they think they are. Okay, a moment of breath. You need to make sure that the ink is completely dry before you go in because it's going to smudge. And where were we? Oh yes. Don't get me wrong guys, because each house is great in their own way, and telling me I'm a Hufflepuff, I take it more than nothing than a compliment. And it could be a fun conversation with friends and family to discuss, but I take this seriously guys, because I actually really believe that I'm going to Hogwarts one day, and I'm still waiting for that letter to arrive at my door. <laughs> Not really though. All jokes aside, I think I am a Gryffindor with actually Ravenclaw in second place. And back to the video, I think I am done with the outline. So I'm going to use my eraser. Yes, this eraser and erase all the blue lines. So a lot of manga artists use blue lead, which I will put in the description box with the one that I actually use because I get a lot of comments asking me which one I use and where to get them. But manga artists use blue lead because you won't really need to erase a rough draft after you outline it. Apparently when you put it in the copy machine, the lead will be light enough that it will just disappear. You don't necessarily have to erase it, but I erase it just to clean up the look. After erasing, there will be so much dust going on, but I use my little handy ladybug to clean up my desk. Oh my gosh, it's so useful, I totally recommend. And it's satisfying too. Looking nice. And I'm just going to thicken up some lines and adding some shadows here and there. And then with a brush pen, I'm going to make the hair strokes. I'm going to make lots of downward motions with a flick at the end. A lot of manga artists use this technique to fill the hair to make it extra shiny and glossy. You need to be careful with the hair flow, and I guess you just go for it. So far, so good. It's not done yet though. I'm going to finish it later, but before I finish it, I decided to move on to my second scene. And moving on to scene two. The second scene that I chose is actually Emma Watson's favorite line. It's when she looks at Harry and Ron and says, Now. If Peter don't mind, I'm going to bed before either of you come up with another clever idea to get us killed. Or worse, expelled. <sighs> she actually said that that's her favorite line from the whole series at an interview once. And since I am a huge Emma Watson fan, I needed to choose that scene. With that being said, let's move on to the second scene. I wanted to make it a bit more comical for this scene. After Hermione says her line, Ron says she needs to sort out her priorities. I literally remember like every line from the movie because I've watched it so many times. But I thought it would be a fun page because the first scene that I chose was a bit more serious. So on the right, I'm going to draw Hermione looking annoyed at Harry and Ron. On the left top corner, I'm going to draw the door that she slams. And on the bottom two panels, I decided to draw Harry and Ron looking a bit confused. I've had this layout in my head for a very long time ever since I wanted to draw this as a manga, and I finally got around to do it. This is how it's going to look like. Okay. Now starting from Hermione, let's start the rough draft. I am obviously using Emma as reference, and I know that in the real book, Hermione has two big front teeth and really fuzzy hair, but I guess I didn't want to emphasize it too much because I wanted to follow Emma's Hermione more. Fun fact, they tried to put her buck teeth at first, which you can actually see her with her teeth at the end of the first movie. They actually took the last scene first, so that's when she had her buck teeth. But it got in her way for acting, so she took them off for the rest of the movie. Here, I'm just drawing Harry and Ron a bit more comical. I've been wanting to draw this. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. And again, I'm just going to do the same thing with blue lead. And here we go. When you're using this pen, you can only make downwards motion. It can't really go up or sideways, so you'll see me moving around the paper or the pen to make the lines work. I was so proud of myself so far because it was going quite well, with no accidents. Then this happens. <laughs> oh no, a smudge. But thankfully, it was only at the edge of the paper, so it didn't really affect anything. I've dropped ink all over the paper before, all over my blankets before, so this is like no problem for me, but I was so close. 
Next, the background. Backgrounds are a big part of manga that I'm still not that great at. I'm amazed at how manga artists can make backgrounds and everything. It could take a long time to make really detailed backgrounds and you need to make like 16 pages per week. You also need to come up with a storyline during that week so there's not much time to draw and make it very detailed. Granted, manga artists don't really do everything themselves. They usually come up with the plot and draw the characters, but then they'll have their assistant finish up the rest. But still, I am always thankful and amazed when mangas have really detailed backgrounds. I can't imagine how much time and effort they put. I'm just going to erase the lines, fill up the eyes, clothes, and other small parts. And we are ready to move on to the last stage, the screen tones. Okay, before the screen tones, I was having so much fun that day that I decided to draw a bonus page. This was literally just for fun. It was like 2am in the morning. First, I wanted to draw Harry with a sorting hat repeatedly saying, not Slytherin, not Slytherin, not Slytherin. Again, so iconic. And on the bottom half, I decided to draw Draco Malfoy. It's when he's sad because he realized that he lost against Gryffindors. So before I moved on to screen tones, I wanted to go by some more screen tones that may work better because I only have a limited amount of supplies. So after I was done with this little bonus page, I went to sleep. And onto the next day, I decided to go to an art store to shop for some screen tones. If you don't know what screen tones are, they are like printed sheets of paper that's kind of like stickers. I'll show you guys more later. So to the art store. Okay, let's go upstairs. There's so many manga supplies, it's literally heaven up there. Look at all these screen tones. Oh my god. There's got to be something that goes perfect with it. Hmm. So they basically cost about $4.30 per sheet. This is kind of fun. There's actually some more on the other side. Okay, not that many, but what do we have here? Oh, by the way, these ones cost $3.50 each. Maybe this one, this one. They even have background, so if you don't want to draw it, you can just kind of use this. That's an option. Ooh. This is perfect. And maybe this. Okay, maybe one more. And I'm done. And behind all these... Oh my gosh, look at all these supplies. But you know, I'm not here for random supplies today, so I think we're ready to go home. Now, back to the first page. Now that we've got some screen tones, let's see which one works best. How about this one for Hagrid? It's really easy to use. All you have to do is cut off a big chunk, stick it onto the paper, cut around using an X-Acto knife, and peel it off. That's basically it. Let me look for more screen tones. Not this, not this. Okay, maybe this. Again, I'm just going to cut off the excess. Hmm, I wanted something in the background, but then I was like, nah. I think it looks cleaner without anything, so on to the second page. How about this one for her robe? And then again I was like, nah. I know I'm using so much screen tones, but don't worry. I usually put it back if I don't like it, so I can use it later. I decided to use this screen tone with a gradient, adding a different tone for her skirt, some for the stones, and something for the last two panels. I kind of thought about using the newspaper thing first, but went on for these dots. Lastly, I finished up the tie and colored in the rest of the robe. And after a very long time, I think we are done with our manga. This is how it turned out, but I scanned it into my computer, added some words and effects, and this is the end result. And this is how it turned out. What do you guys think? I'm actually really satisfied with how it turned out. I mean, I drew like a bonus page just because I was having so much fun. 
Anyways, I guess that's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up, maybe a comment below if you guys want to see this again. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next video. Bye!